In this lecture, we're going to be covering the different type of ways in which we can categorize the so many chemical reactors. So far, we already understood why are there so many type of chemical reactors. In some specific cases, we could say that we could arrange them because of operation, profitability. Are we going to encounter problems with the mechanisms of reaction, maybe pathways of reaction, or maybe we're going to encounter problems with temperature, pressure, or whatever way in which we operate is something worth categorizing. Talking about categories, we're going to encounter the most common ones that I want you to be aware of because this is very common and depending on the industry, in the region, in the type of job or in the type of products that you're selling, you will have different type of categories. But overall, these are the most common ones that you will encounter. Number one, as stated before, there is no single way to categorize chemical reactors. Remember that. It may depend on how you are approaching the type of chemical reactors. The very first one will be mode of operation. If we're working with a batch reactor, maybe we're working with a continuous reactor, a semi-continuous, which will be something in between, like a hybrid. So definitely this is one of the easiest ways to categorize reactors. But it's not limited to that because we will have ideal performances or real performances. You know that idealities do not occur that often in real life. So hence, we need to have real models for our reactors. How well are they behaving or how much are they deviating from our design? We may also encounter that some type of reactors will not require catalysts. On the other hand, some type of reactions will definitely do not occur if there is not a catalyst present. So the question on whether or not we need a catalyst is something quite interesting. We will have catalytic reactors and non-catalytic reactors. And within catalytic reactors, we have like a universe of reactors. We have moving bed reactors, we have packed bed reactors, fixed bed reactors, fluidized bed reactors. We have a lot of reactors in this type of category. We can also arrange reactors in function or purpose of the reactor. Let it be if it's going to ferment, well, quite easy. It's going to be a fermenter. If it's going to gasify material, it is a gasifier. If it's going to burn stuff in order to pyrolyze material, it's a pyrolyzer. If we want to form a plastic or a polymer, it's a polymer reactor. So that could be a way of category. Basis of the activation source, maybe we're talking about ultrasonic operation, photoreactors, microwave reactors. Maybe we're talking about on the constructional features, and this is very common whenever working with EPC. They are much more interested on how they are going to build it and install it rather than the actual operation of the reactor. This could be a loop reactor, rotating drum reactor, rotating basket, and so on special purpose or niche application, miscellaneous reactors, or essentially all the ways in which we could not fit in a single category, where you may be talking about micro reactors or maybe any type of chemical reaction that could not fit other categories. These are some common categories, guys, but I'm also going to add some categories that I have seen in my experience or as a process engineer, you will encounter a lot of people or jargon in the industry, and this is also important to consider. As I said before, we may be talking about chemical reactors that are industrial or lab reactors. We may encounter these a lot, heterogeneous or homogeneous reactions. Heterogeneous will imply that we have more than two phases, or actually technically speaking, two or more phases. And homogeneous requires only a single phase, catalytic versus non-catalytic reactors, continuous versus non-continuous reactors, biological versus non-biological reactors. This is very common to say in biotech or biotechnology. Single phase versus multiple phase. As I said before, we can be working with a single phase or multiple phases. This is pretty similar to heterogeneous versus non-heterogeneous or homogeneous, but not quite the same. So just stick to that. Traditional versus modern. When we're talking about traditional, this requires, of course, that the operation is the traditional one or the intended one, but modern reactors will have a twist or maybe a different approach towards the reaction. Pharmaceutical versus non-pharmaceutical. Yeah, quite literally. 
Sometimes you go to the pharmaceutical industry and some type of materials may not be able to work with pharmaceuticals and hence the reactor will simply not be a pharmaceutical reactor. So that's why they separate quickly. Is it a pharmaceutical reactor or a non-pharmaceutical reactor? And these are also very valid common ways to categorize chemical reactors.